transfers. Let's talk to Stuart Reid, who is the UK Director of Orange Cyber Defence. Stuart, how damaging is all of this for Twitter? Uh, well, um, hi there, Lucy. I think that we're still seeing some of the details emerging uh, right now, but, but given what's already been said, um, the inference is that this could have been what's known as a social engineering attack, um, whereby a cyber criminal gains the trust um, of an employee, in this case, it seems, uh, whilst pretending to be someone or an organisation that has a legitimate interest in order to get passwords um, or privileged access to computer systems. So it's pretty significant. And how worrying then is it for other tech companies that the same kind of breaches could happen to them? Well, the, the challenge is that this is kind of another example of um, uh, cyber attacks and cyber criminals um, taking advantage um, of, uh, of organisations and, and potential vulnerabilities within those organisations. The, the type of deception that we're looking at here in the Twitter example is becoming um, increasingly common. Uh, the recent Orange Cyber Defence Security Navigator report, for example, has identified an uplift of attacks such as this. Uh, and it's perhaps unsurprising because you look at the, the context of the challenges of, of where we are with COVID-19, um, it means that so many more employees are actually home-based and they're, they're working remotely now. Uh, and they become more exposed to virtual communications. We've got email, we've got video conferencing, such as the one we're on now. Um, we've got uh, normal telephone calls taking place. So cyber criminals really capitalise on that. Uh, and so employees are becoming more vulnerable. But surely at somewhere like Twitter, the same security measures were in place for people working at home as they would have been in the office, Stuart? Uh, well, I can't comment in terms of the processes and procedures um, of Twitter specifically. I don't have that information. But what this really underlines, this, uh, uh, this, this potential attack that, that we're seeing on Twitter, is that no one is immune um, to, to cybercrime. Uh, this is a prime example, actually, uh, of, uh, of why cybersecurity has to be a layered approach of people, processes and technology. It's not enough just to have the security technology in place. It has to be supported by well understood processes, procedures and also the education of anybody that's responsible for handling data within an organisation. Stuart, Jack Dorsey has come out very quickly and apologised. Is there anything else he can say that will reassure people or do you think we might see a, a lot of very famous people leaving the platform? Uh, well, in fairness to Twitter, as you say, they've um, they've already taken some very swift action, uh, and I think it's important that there's the uh, the openness and transparency. But of course, that has to be balanced with with understanding what's going on within the organisation uh, right now. So uh, I think it's, it's it's prudent of any organisation to acknowledge. Uh, that something may have happened, but also equally prudent that they fully investigate it before um, before they uh, suggest what their mitigation or what their procedures in the future uh, are going to look like. But I would expect out of the back of this right now uh, that, uh, that Twitter will be reviewing its processes and procedures in the light of what's happened. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they are. Stuart, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much.